there's something about belief in self and understanding who you are that I think is the most, I don't know, it's just the most important part of life. And again, that doesn't mean being complacent in your current job. And if you're in a relationship, you don't have to be complacent in that relationship. Like, I think the thing you learn as you age and um, is that even relationships that aren't perfect or right, like, you can evolve them. It's a challenge. It's not easy. But you can change them. You can just, hey, like, we need to change this dynamic here. And that's a work relationship, especially a romantic relationship, right? It's like, well, you know, that relationship wasn't great. Like, what well, did you try and fix it? Well, no. Okay, we can try. You can you can evolve things. People can be different to each other. But the number one thing I think you need is to know who you are, and accept who you are, and accept that who you are is good. It's got to be good enough. And I feel like. I, I just feel like Lamar Jackson isn't there. And this may come across as unfair, but I, I saw this story and it, um, I don't know, it just it just felt to me like here's a guy who doesn't really know who he is or doesn't want to embrace who he is and instead tries to prove he's somebody he is not. Lamar Jackson Struggled this past weekend. He wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great. And how many different analysts, former coaches, we just had a former GM on, and they all say the same thing, like, why don't they run the ball more? Why don't they run the ball more? Here's John Harbaugh, his head coach, when he talked about Lamar playing a bigger role in the offensive scheming. You say Lamar has the keys to the offense, okay? Now you build the offense, it's like setting up a car. We've got to build a car. We've got to set the car up. If Lamar's a driver, he's got to be involved in the setup of the car even more. Last year that wasn't even possible, right? This year he's going to be involved, and he's, we've talked about it. He's already involved about what we talked about yesterday in setting up that car. Now he comes in on the front end, and he's talking to the guys about how the car's set up and exactly how these things need to be run. This year every day was a new day in the offense. You know, right on through to the last part of the season. Next year, it won't be a new day every single day. And that's, that's pretty easy to figure out and, and, and make, it makes sense, right? But it's, it's real. And I'm looking forward to that next part of that process. He's, he's talking X's and O's. He's talking the opportunity and how we attack the different defenses that we play. Anything from how we practice to it, to the options that we have, you know, protecting runs, pass protection, how we protect and how we adjust the protections, uh, how we get to certain routes against certain coverages. Those are things that are on his mind, you know, and those are things that he's going to be involved with the staff talking about. You know, I'm excited about that. He wants to do it, uh, you know, and we, he's just into it, man. He's really into it. Um, I think that Lamar has heard enough of us say, and he knows the quarterback position well, he wants to prove to us I can be a pocket guy. Now, look, there's a, a, a supreme amount of intelligence and understanding that at some point you start to slow down, you get hit, and you get hit, you get hurt, it shortens your career, and he wants to have a long and illustrious career. He wants to win multiple Super Bowls. He looks like he's going to win multiple MVPs. But but what that soundbite signifies to me is that one, like I said, I thought this was their best shot ever. He was still on his rookie deal, granted his fifth year. But it was an offense that people hadn't seen how they wanted to use him in this type of spot against that level of team. And they didn't really have a book on him where next year, yes, he'll have better knowledge of the offense and they'll have a better feel, but so will everybody else. And there's likely they're going to miss some pieces because – you can't pay your quarterback that much more money and in effect that the cap and something not give. But the biggest takeaway, and I've said this since I watched the game, is I feel like Lamar was trying to prove to us he can he's a better passer than he actually is, and it backfired. It backfired. Yes, there are there is a lower ceiling when you run a bunch. Okay. But I would also challenge that I, I, I equate this to Deshaun Watson's last year at Clemson when they won the national title. Their, uh, his performances that year were uneven because he was trying to throw show he could throw. 
He was trying to show that he could be a starting NFL quarterback, a number one overall pick. And then when they got to the the playoff, they then he was just like, let's just go, let's just go play. And he ran it a ton. He made unbelievable plays with his legs. And frankly, the defense wasn't that prepared for it. That's what I would have done in this situation. Doesn't mean I would have run Greg Roman's offense, but I definitely would have used him as a running threat a whole lot more because it's not just he's running threat. He's the most dynamic runner we've ever seen at that position. And he can throw. But this is a lot like when Lamar came out. You know? Here's how good that guy is. In spite of the fact that he doesn't want us to know he's a great runner, he's probably the best running quarterback of all time. In spite of the fact that having your mom as your agent has been an abject disaster to everybody around. He's going to get paid more than anybody but like two guys in the NFL next year. Maybe there'll be a couple more contracts. In spite of the fact that he's been uneven as a passer, especially outside the numbers, um, he's going to win his second MVP. But, but, this is a big but. Had he had a traditional agent, he probably would have gone higher. Had he had a traditional agent, he probably would have run. Remember he didn't run the 40 when he was at the combine? That was when the whole, will you run routes with the wide receivers came out. Why would you run the 40? Why, if you're the fastest quarterback ever recorded, wouldn't you want to be recorded as the fastest quarterback ever recorded? Lean into your strengths. It was explained to me a long time ago, the difference between a pro and an amateur. And it was a little like this. Amateurs try to prove to you that they're not what they you think they are. Pros do what they do well and don't do anything else. Now, look, he's, he's an amazing talent. He's an improved passer. He's not bad. He's not... Tebow or whatever, but he's also not Stafford. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Pat Mahomes. He's not Josh Allen yet as a, as a thrower and may, may never be, but they're never going to be him as a runner. I just, I feel like one of the reasons for the disparity in run pass or maybe pass run is Lamar trying to prove to people that he's not who we think he is instead of just doing what he does well and do that thing. 